X, formerly known as Twitter. The company's CEO, Linda Yaccarino, reportedly is going to be meeting with seven banks that help bankroll Elon Musk take over the social media platform. The Financial Times reporting Yaccarino will lay out her plan for reviving the company. That meeting expected next Thursday. Yaccarino also taking center stage at the Code Conference on Wednesday night with our own Julia Borson. And Julia jo joins us this morning with more on what was and what wasn't said. Good morning. Good morning to you, Andrew. Well, first is some headlines that Lindy Acarino made about X's business. She announced that X is on track to turn profitable early next year. But with so much news coming from Elon Musk about the future of the platform, formerly known as Twitter, I asked Lindy Acarino if she was consulted on his announcement about the intention to start charging a fee for X. She did not confirm whether the company was moving entirely to a subscription model. Elon Musk announced you're moving to an entirely subscription-based service. Yeah. Nothing free on, about using X. Do you, Did he say we were moving to it specifically or is thinking about it? He said that's the plan. Yeah. So did he consult you before he announced that? We talk about everything. When I asked if she was more of a COO than a CEO because it's Musk that oversees X's product, here's what she said. Who wouldn't want Elon Musk sitting by their side running product? <laughs> I see a show of hands. I, there may be a few show of hands to get the cute chuckles you're getting, but I would say the percentages in this room are about 99% who would say no to that and 1% of maybe personal opinion so feelings. I also pressed her on Musk's threat to sue the Anti-Defamation League, asking whether Musk's threat of legal action after her productive meeting with the ADL was working in opposition to her efforts with both organizations and with advertisers. Do you think that it is better to have these conversations and these meetings, as you're describing, or to threaten a lawsuit? Is, 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 are there times when you wish that Elon Musk would not tweet and would instead let you do your job? The foundation of X is based on free expression and freedom of speech. Everyone deserves to have that opportunity to speak their opinion no matter who they are, including Elon, including you, Julia. On stage, I asked Gaccarino how many monetizable daily active users the company had. Now, she didn't have an answer in the moment, but she followed up to share that the company now has 245 million daily users. That is up slightly from the 237.8 million when Twitter last publicly reported earnings at the end of the second quarter of 2022 before Musk took it over. Now, Twitter, now X, also announced that now 1.5 million people sign up for X daily. That's up 4% from last year. Andrew? So, Julia, there has been, as I mentioned uh, in the tease before we came to you, a lot reported over the last 24 hours about uh, what some people have called drama surrounding that interview, stemming from Kara Swisher's late ad to the agenda of an interview with Joel Roth, who is the former head of Twitter's trust and safety and now a critic of the platform. What happened? Well, uh, Joel Roth was thoughtful in his responses to Kara. Uh, he had talked about a lot of these issues in New York Times pieces. He was also empathetic to Yacarino's challenges at the company. And he was very clear that he had left the company long before Yacarino arrived. He left late last year. Yacarino started in June. But he did paint a picture of a horrific experience he had had with death threats that were prompted by tweets from Elon Musk. Uh, this all forced him to move and really uproot his life. And when Kara Swisher asked him to give Yacarino advice, he said that she should be worried not only for herself, but also for her friends and family, too, after the, the threats that he had faced. Uh, help us with this, though. So what, what about the timing of the interviews? That seems to be one of the things. Uh, there's a lot of commotion on social media about who knew what when, if you will, has become almost a story unto itself. Well, Andrew, Lindy Acarino was the first person we had booked for the code conference. She was the first name we announced um, as one of our speakers. That was back in June. So she was announced in June. Yoel Roth 
was definitely a late ra uh, late add to the schedule. He was announced Wednesday morning. So he was announced Wednesday morning after both Lindy Yaccarino and I had been informed that he was going to be on the agenda. But I have to say, I reported on a lot of code conferences. There are always changes. So for instance, I had booked an interview with GM CEO Mary Barra. I was looking forward to that one, but she, of course, canceled at the last minute because of the auto workers strike. And in years past, there were plenty of surprise guests who were not announced until right before they were on stage. Um, so I, I say last minute changes in the agenda is not unusual when you're dealing with big uh, CEOs. Um, but Kara Swisher's interview and Yoel's Roth, Yoel Roth's responses did raise some important issues about trust and safety um, that were really key for Yacarino to answer. She did say she was hiring many more people in that space, but there were still some key questions that were left unanswered and many more questions I didn't get to um, before she had to leave. So I uh, had, had a lot more questions on my agenda, Andrew. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get answers soon. Uh, Julia Borston, thank you uh, for bringing us all that this morning.